Despite all the amazing achievements of modern science, there are some fundamental limitations to the power of the scientific methods. And I will try to explain the basic gist of the idea to you now in a few minutes. The idea is that scientific models are always models. So they are abstractions from reality. They are like maps that kind of like describe the reality, but they are not one to one. The basic question is, what is the largest map that would be really useful to describe reality? Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice in Wonderland, he was obviously always interested in problems of mathematics. Alice in Wonderland is basically a book about mathematics. It's not necessarily about uh, funny hats and talking cats. Um, he explained it this way. So what do you consider the largest map that would be really useful? Well, about six inches to the mile. I replied. So six inches represent one mile. So it's an abstraction of reality. You make it smaller and that's that's then really useful. Only six inches, exclaimed Mam Hare. We very soon got to six yards to the mile. Then we tried a hundred yards to the mile and then came the greatest idea of all. We actually made a map of the country on the scale of a mile to a mile. Have you used this, it much? I inquired. It has never been spread out yet, said Mein Herr. The farmer's objective, they said it would cover the whole country and shut out the sunlight. So we now use the country itself as its own map. And I assure you, it does nearly as well. <laughs> of course, I mean, a map one to one is completely used. And then you can use the country as well. And that's the basic limitation of science. We never have a map that is actually one to one. You usually have an abstraction from reality. So for example, here you see one model of reality. And if you zoom out, you start to understand that actually it's just some selected aspects of a much more complex picture. But you cannot take reality one to one. And, and now what makes it quite delicate is that starting if this is really now reality as it is, you might have as well focused on different aspects and make a model like this. So these two models, they are models of the same reality, but obviously they have very different predictions that explain this reality from very different perspectives. So that's why people actually often say that all models are wrong, as George Box would say, but some models are useful. So all models are wrong. This here is wrong and this here is wrong, but, but some of them are actually useful to understand. But that doesn't change the fact that the only working model of the universe is a universe, a one-to-one -one map. Now you would have to model everything that's in this universe in order to explain uh, everything else, a one-to-one -one map. For example, there's the famous butterfly effect so that refers to the metaphor that a butterfly might flap its wings in Asia and these wings convert into a little air and this air converts into a little breeze and it converts into a wind and the wind converts into a hurricane and then the hurricane hits the west coast of the United States. And, and where did it come from? Well, from the flap of the butterfly. So if you wanted to predict the hurricane, you should have modeled the flap of every butterfly in Asia. So this metaphor, and this, these kind of things can happen. Sometimes very small nuances, especially in chaotic systems, can have a very large and unpredictable effect. So you have to model everything. The flap of every butterfly, and if you want to really understand reality, and in the universe, every particle, every atom, every quantum spin. And only then you have a real working model of the universe. You work with a one-to-one -one map. Now it's very inconvenient to have a universe on your desk. So what you do is you take some stuff out. But as soon as you take some stuff out, your model is not correct anymore. It is wrong. Your model must be wrong then. It might still be useful. Now the ambition with computational social science is to create these kind of digital representations. So saying that Working model of universe is a digital universe. We create computer simulations. We feed them with big data, with very fine grained data. And we run these computer simulations in order to understand how reality works, make predictions about reality. And in the future, uh, decision makers, probably politicians in power, they will be informed not by some advisor and some by economic council and so forth. They will be informed actually by the results of these simulation models. We 
we will in real time model society fed with big data, huge models that allow us to make predictions on basis of which then the commander in chief has to take decisions. So this is actually uh, the future of computational social science looks like. Now, it's very important to understand that all models are wrong. So you can use, even if you have very complete computer simulations of society, they are still an abstraction. It's never a one-to-one -one map. You will never model every neuron of everybody involved in society to make absolutely complete predictions. So Scott Page, uh, a, a professor in Michigan and Arbor, uh, often talks about then the many model thinker. So he says, well, in order to understand reality, what we have to do is we always have to work with many models that complement each other. So with a model like this and with a model like this. Now they are both not right, they're both wrong, but in their combination they might give us insights to different aspects of reality because with, the, with society itself, we simply, we simply cannot work. But digital computational social science gets us a little bit closer. Even so, it's, it's still wrong.